to go to the next part of this uh, panel, uh, so handing over the, the, the floor to uh, Her Excellency uh, Mariam Almeri to speak about a sustainable food system. So we go from energy to food. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, thank you for your time uh, to be here with us. Uh, thank you also to the World Policy Conference organizers. Um, it's really been, uh, we've had some great discussions. Um, yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, I've, I've taken now the Minister of Climate Change and Environment role. Uh, before that, I was Minister of State for Food and Water Security, so I did spend a lot of my years looking into food systems. So I'll be talking a lot about that now because I've just started my, my new journey. And, uh, but for me, it's also a big learning lesson to see the discussions around energy, around climate change. And as you all know, the food systems and the clim climate change, it's all inextricably interlinked uh, together. So, I mean, we all, we just had the United Nations Food Systems Summit, um, SDG goal number two, zero hunger by 2030 is uh, still a huge step away. Um, there's clearly still a lot to be done. It's, it's funny because in a way our food systems are the problem, but they are also the solution as well. The more we try to ramp up our food production to overcome the effects of climate change, the more we are actually contributing to climate change itself. And really what is needed now is total commitment to food systems transformation. And for us here in the UAE, um, we see ourselves as responsible global citizens. And for us to do this transformation or be part of this transformation, we also have to start looking at these transformations within the UAE itself. I kind of just want to give you a little bit of a history. Uh, 2008, 2009, we faced our food, last food crisis here in the UAE. And uh, the leadership of the UAE really said, okay, it's, it's time we take food security needs to be taken more seriously than it has been. We need to start looking into how we can ensure that we're not just food secure today, but also in future. In the past uh, years, UAE has been known as be being a hub of food trade. So we have our ports, we have our national airlines, we have excellent infrastructure to bring huge volumes of food into the country. And as you may all know, we have over 200 nationalities living here in the UAE. Everybody has their tastes and uh, what they like to eat. So everybody likes to go to the supermarket and find their foods that they usually find at home. So when you see this, uh, um, we're now really looking at, okay, moving forward, uh, how can we ensure, because we are so dependent on the global uh, food supply chains, how can we make sure that the UAE still has or is ensured of, of food security in the future? Going through COVID was also a big learning lesson for us. So going back to we faced our food crisis and the leadership took many steps. One of them was to appoint a Minister of State for Food Security, which is myself. Um, this was also the first time for the UAE. Uh, with that, the first steps I did was making sure uh, we, have a, we have a plan that the country knows where it is that we're going. Because food security as a subject itself, it's about food trade, it's about nutrition, it's about food loss and food waste, it's about um, food safety, it's about ensuring you have national reserves, especially for a country that doesn't have the typical agricultural uh, lands and, and, and um, we're not an agricultural country in itself, so you have the national storages as well. So thinking of all those things, I kind of have to, had to speak with all the stakeholders and bring them together and say, let's create a national plan for the country to ensure that in future we're also ready and we're more resilient. So we launched the National Food Security Strategy 2051 in 2018. Then, of course, for every strat strategy, you have to have a vehicle to move this forward. So we, we then created the governance model uh, for the UAE and putting it forward. And then, bang, 2020 came, COVID came. And this was, for us, a big learning lesson. Believe me, there was a lot happening in the background. But for those who lived here, for a country that brings in more than 90% of its food, we didn't face a single minute where some shelves were empty of certain food commodities. And I think this really shows uh, that we are, as a country, have a really robust food system. 
and that the plans we had in place and the programs and the, the partnerships and the leadership's political, the political will was there. I think these were all really important elements to showcase that the only way you can move forward also in future is to ensure that you have these elements in, in place. And so with that, of course, taking also action on a global scale and helping other countries. I mean, I think a lot of you saw, I mean, we did repatriation flights and we kind of used those flights to bring in food to the country. Uh, the UAE was really one of the leaders when it came to humanitarian aid. We sent them food, we sent them medical supplies. So we really took our role as a responsible uh, world citizen in, in when it comes to food systems and 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 towards the SDG2. So um, we, of course, took our part as well in the United Nations Food Systems Summit. And as you all know, um, we're now moving towards the COP26 as well. Um, but before we go to COP26, um, a, a key element that we learned as well going through COVID was that actually we, sh we should start looking at what we could grow in the UAE. Uh, and it needs to make commercial sense and it needs to be, sustainability needs to be in the heart of it. So you've all heard of vertical farms or closed environment agriculture. So these are all systems of how you can now grow food in a closed system where you can actually control the environment and when you're, where you're able to actually recirculate the water. You can recirculate it again and again and reuse it. And for, for us, water is a precious resource as well. So. We, we really try to look into, okay, let's create, now we have the plan and we also have the UAE food basket. So we needed to identify what are our main food items. With all these 200 nationalities living in the UAE, what does the UAE actually eat? Um, and so you see things like rice, of course, there are other parts of the world where potato is then more uh, the, the commodity there. So really looking into the needs of a country's, what are the food items? And then from that basket, what actually makes sense to grow in the UAE? And this is where the private sector then came and said, okay, we now have technologies. We don't actually need, we, it can all be done inside. We just need a uh, small space and uh, we need connection to water and electricity. So this is where you get the whole connection of energy and water. And the whole idea now is hopefully one day, how can we grow food um, without using expensive, uh, unsustainable energy sources and being able to use water, treated wastewater, for example, um, into the system to have uh, to, to have food for everybody. And I often say the three S's. How can we use the sun, the sea, and the sand to produce food? So the UAE wants to become not just a hub for food trade, but we want to become a hub for technology, innovation, and knowledge when it comes to growing certain foods in environments such as in the UAE. And this is where we're moving towards. Uh, I'm sure some of you have heard of the Aim for Climate initiative, which was announced at the leaders' uh, uh, COP summit, uh, where His, uh, His Excellency Joe Biden announced the Aim for Climate initiative our Prime Minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, also announced it. So it's called Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate, Aim for Climate. And it's all about how countries can come together, share data, share knowledge, and accelerate in research and development needed to transform our food systems. So we're taking our, um, our we, we see this as a duty that we must do, and we've already started. The first initiative was announced to create a, a valley or a playground called Food Tech Valley. So this is, um, in a way, I, yeah, I like to say playground of where we hope to see future clean tech-based uh, food technologies, food systems come alive. This is where we try to attract youth, where we attract attract women more women into the sector to try and look at how we can grow food differently. And um, so we're really excited about these projects moving forward. And as I was saying, this is some of the glimpses. I, I don't want to go on and on with a lot of the initiatives that we've done, but the UAE is really taking big steps into uh, transforming our own food systems and also helping other countries as well.
And of course, as we move now to COP26, um, unquen un unquestionably uh, the most important edition of the summit since the inaugural COP uh, was held in Berlin in 1995, the UAE is really fully committed to playing a leading role at the summit. Um, it is, or we have been one of the few countries in the region to submit, and now I need to look a little bit more at my notes because this is going into my new portfolio. <laughs> so um, we were one of the few countries in the region to submit a second NDC, which is called the National Determined uh, Commitments. Correct? National Contributions. Contributions. There we go. You, I think you are more familiar <laughs> with the wordings than I am. Um, ahead of the December 30th, 2020 deadline, uh, which included a region-first economy-wide target of 23.5% reduction of emissions by 2030. And I believe this uh, translates into an absolute emission reduction of about 70 million tons. We also support the G77 and China position uh, that developed countries need to deliver on the $100 billion of public finance they promised in 2009. Although as a developing country, the UAE is not part of this pledge, but we believe in helping fellow developing, uh, developing countries. And here are some examples. We are major investors uh, in renewable energy projects in over 70 countries, I'm sure, Mubadala, uh, Mazdar are some, some familiar um, companies that you know that have done huge investments in this area. Uh, we've provided billions of dollars in humanitarian relief for climate disasters. We have provided over $1 billion of grants and soft loans for renewable energy power projects in developing countries. So we will be, we, we will be delivering a high level participation at COP26 with our supplementary initiatives, including the launch of Aim for Climate, which I just talked about, um, uh, with the USA. And this is, a, as I said, a voluntary initiative that brings together participants to kind of increase and accelerate uh, global innovation, research and development on agriculture and food system transformation in support of climate action. So we like to lead by example and show efforts in transforming our food systems um, we know that this is not easy and this is um, it also it takes mind change as well and we're experiencing this in the UAE as well making the people understand that it's uh, we need to move forward with these transitions we need to look at how can we empower companies for example who have ag tech um, uh, technologies and say, you know what, we're ready to grow strawberries in the UAE. Okay, how can we empower these companies to actually grow strawberries in the UAE? So what we've done a lot to is, is listen. Listen to what the private sector needs. And in doing so, um, what we're trying to do is change the blueprint of the country. Because the blueprint of the country so far was very much based on trade, food trade. But now changing the blueprint to start attracting investments to the UAE. So there are typical small things like, okay, access to finance. Uh, there should be insurance companies to, to insure your pro produce. Some people may think this is actually basics, but these are things that we have to actually lay the foundation for in the UAE to try and look at how we can now attract ag tech companies to, to develop in the UAE. So with that, I will stop talking and take your questions. <laughs>